Hey YouTube, Poops Lag here, and this is TurboFat, an open source game I'm making in Godot. The source code is linked below if you want to check out how it works. And this month, I've been expanding the game's new career mode with some storytelling elements like cutscenes and stuff like that. So some of the cool little story goodies I developed will still have a home. <laughs> anyway, uh, let me show you what I've done. So I had to figure out how to transfer the story into career mode, which is tricky for two reasons. The first reason is that in the traditional story mode, it will it followed like a linear progression where you might enter an area and then play levels A, B, C, and D and see cutscenes A, B, C, and D and then beat the area. So it's easy to tell that kind of a story. But in career mode, the levels all get scrambled and they're served to you randomly. You get to cherry pick like, oh, that level looks fun. So it's more gameplay focused, but I can't tell the story in a random order. So I had to figure out how that would work. And the second thing was in story mode, there was a fixed length where you had to beat these 12 levels to get through the area. But in career mode, if you're really good at the game, you can just get through an area in like one level and, and advance 25 steps or whatever. And you're like, bye area A, and you don't see any of the story. So I had to figure out like, well, how is this going to work? So the story flow problem for career mode became a lot easier to solve once I thought of splitting up the story into like the beginning, middle, and end for each area. And when do I tell each of these parts, right? So if you enter area B for the first time, that's when it'll tell like the intro to area B story. And, it'll, and then if you enter area C and D in the same playthrough, it'll also say like, oh, welcome to area C, welcome to area D. And you'll, you'll know what's going on in all three of those areas. And thematically, you're sort of like jumping between them and helping out wherever you're, you're free. So you're not like trapped in one area waiting to progress. You're just sort of like freelance, like, oh, let me help you out there. Um, as long as you're stuck in area D, though, you'll still just be seeing area D's story until you see like all the cutscenes and you see like everything that's happened and, and it does its full progression and then you see the last cutscene. So you don't see the last cutscene when you leave an area. It doesn't say like, oh, we're leaving goodbye. It's more just after you've seen the entire story for an area, then it says, okay, now like we'll see you later. You're done. You did a good job. So I like that for a reason that it solved a second problem I was having, which was I did want some way for people who aren't good at the game to still progress. So just because you're stuck in an area, like the level's too hard, I can't beat them, I'm only moving one step at a time, that's okay. Once you see all the cutscenes in an area, then you'll just get to like, whoop, just go, get out of here. You're, you're getting bored, we'll, we'll let you progress anyways. So the cutscenes in the old story mode had some complex ordering logic where it would say something like, you have to watch cutscenes one and two, but before you see cutscene four, you have to watch two out of three of the cutscenes 3A, B, 3B, and 3C, or something like that. And it all worked, but it was pretty complicated. And when it came time to do stuff in career mode and translate that story over, I thought, like, well, I can do all that stuff with a pretty simple rule, which is to say something like, uh, always show numbered cutscenes in order. And then when you get to the lettered cutscenes, like A, B, and C, you can just shuffle those however you like, or something like that. So I came up with a list like you see on the left, and I thought, oh, if I just sort it, then I'll be able to come up with some algorithm that can pick which cutscene gets shown next. But I had trouble writing that algorithm. It would be something like, you have to pick the oldest unshown cutscene, which is not ending with a number. And if it ends with a number, you have to make sure the one before it has been shown or something. It was it was messy. When I started trying to write that algorithm, I got really stuck. And then I reordered the cutscenes in a tree instead of a list. And then it just became super easy. It was just like, oh, take your tree. And if you're at a tier that has letters, all those letters can be shown. And if you're at a tier which has numbers, you can only show the leftmost number. And so then it was, it was super easy. So just picking the right data structure was key there. So one other thing which was in my way for these career mode cutscenes, right, and having the story in career mode, was that the current story mode where you could like run around and talk to people, it was like a pretty massive scene which had three important things. It had environmental data about like where the chairs and floor is positioned and what color it is, and where the walls are and all that stuff. It also had scripts for controlling your character. Like if you run around and, and then hit the talk button, who do you talk to? And lastly, it had logic for actually playing the cutscenes, where it'd say if there's a cutscene queued, ignore the player's input, like what buttons they're hitting, and just reposition these characters in a specific place and have them talk. So it had all three of those things, and I only wanted to do some of those in career mode. But more importantly, the way like the indoor and outdoor areas worked was I just had one big monolithic outdoor area with all that stuff. And then I had one big monolithic indoor area with all the same stuff, but just different environmental data. And I was like, this feels really icky. And I'm eventually going to have like 20 or 30 of these. And I can't just have them all have like the same 15 nodes and then one, one changes. So I decided to go the opposite direction and say, I'm going to have one monolithic outdoor node, but then just the environment changes. So now I've done that. These environment data is now modular, where this world currently has this indoor environment scene on the right here where my mouse is. 
And if I drag in a new one and I say, okay, well, this is going to have all the same game logic, but I just want that environment data to change. I can update this environment scene with new data and it drops that old node and replaces it. And that magic is just done. I mean, it's not magic. It's, it's pretty, pretty basic stuff. But this environment scene resource, that's like the, the scene file, which defines all those tables and chairs and stuff. And when that setter gets called, it knows even in the editor, because this is a tool script, even in the editor, it's going to drop that environment node and give it a new one. And so with this, I should ideally just have to have like three or four top level nodes, which say things like, if I keep it, here's the node for how you can run around and talk to people. Here's the node which has a script for playing cutscenes. And then here's the node which has a script for like the career mode where you can uh, like pick your level and stuff. And all those will be able to use the same environment data ideally. So that's what I'm aiming for. I didn't quite finish it this week, but I, I think it'll just take a, another week or two. So it should be done at the start of the next month. So that's what we did in January. We got a lot of that story stuff transferred from story mode into career mode. So we can play some cutscenes to an extent, but there's pieces that are missing. The um, different like scenery of of like restaurants closing and plants getting chopped down and not all that stuff quite works the way it's supposed to. So that's something I'll have to clean up next month, but I don't think that'll take too long. And the more interesting thing I want to tackle next month is getting the first 30 minutes of the game cemented down. I want to have a new area, which is going to be for, for your hometown, where you're, it's going to be like a more lush foresty area and stuff like that. So I have some ideas for that, but it'll just be exciting to have, honestly, just some new scenery, because I've been looking at the same little mocha colored swamp for like a year now. And so yeah, I eventually want to have six or seven different environments and uh, we'll start on this the second one this next month and i hope it works out hope i hope i get that far and if not you know i guess you guys can make fun of me in the comments but thanks for watching and i'll see you guys in march later